This LOS is calculate a bond's price given a market discount rate. So a quick little introduction before we jump into the calculations. Globally, the fixed income market is a key source of financing for businesses and governments. In fact, the total market value outstanding of corporate and government bonds is significantly larger than that of equity securities. Similarly, the fixed income market, which is also called the debt market or bond market, represents a significant investing opportunity for institutions as well as individuals. Pension funds, mutual funds, insurance companies, and sovereign wealth funds, among others, are major fixed income investors. Retirees who desire a relatively stable income stream often hold fixed income securities. So clearly, understanding how to value fixed income securities is important to investors, issuers, and financial analysts. So this reading focuses on the valuation of traditional option-free fixed rate bonds, although other debt securities such as floating rate notes and money market instruments is also covered later on in other LOS. Bond prices and the time value of money. On a traditional option-free fixed rate bond, the promised future cash flows are a series of coupon interest payments and repayment of the full principal at maturity. The coupon payments are on regularly scheduled dates. For an example, an annual payment bond may pay interest on 15th of June each of each year for five years. The final coupon typically is paid together with the full principal on the maturity date. The price of the bond at issuance is the present value of the promised cash flows. That's it. The price of the bond is the present value of the promised cash flows. The market discount rate is used in the time value of money calculation to obtain the present value. The market discount rate is also the rate of return required by investors given the risk of the investment of the bond. It is also called the required yield or the required rate of return bond prices and the time value of money. So we're just going to look at the calculator here for a second to see which keys we use to calculate a price of a bond and then we'll do an example. Okay. Again, uh, we did this back in the accounting section when we looked at the LOS with regards to the recognition. Nevertheless, we'll do it again here. So first of all, um, you know, the present value and the future value when we're calculating the price, one of these has to be negative. Okay. When we're using the time value of money uh, calculations. Uh, the, the present value, that's the price, okay? And the future value, that's the par value, okay? And the payment is going to be the coupon payment, and that never changes unless it's a special, like, floating rate note. The IOI is the market discount rate, and N equals the number of periods. For semi-annual, N would equal the number of years times 2, okay? And uh, as I said, my preference for doing these, some people there's different strokes for different folks. Some people won't set the parameters and they'll adjust their answer. I don't agree uh, with that method of uh, using the calculator. Uh, so for me, if it's a semi-annual uh, um, uh, payment, I'm going to do second PY and make sure that I've set my calculator to two. Okay. And the other thing is to make sure that you're in the ending mode. Remember, sometimes they're going to give you a annuity question, annuity due where the payments are at the beginning and then the very next question, uh, you know, you'll make sure that you have to make sure that you're not in the beginning mode. And so always double check your calculator. Again, second begin, second enter. Uh, oh, wait a minute, I'm in my beginning mode, so I need to change out of that. Second begin, second enter. Okay, it's gone. So with regards to the bonds, if it's semi-annual, sent your periods per year to two and the mode to the end mode, Again, here's the keys that we're using, N, uh, IY, uh, present value is our price, payment is our coupon, never changes. Be careful, if it's semi-annual, you've got to put in the semi-annual payment, and of course our future value is our par value. Okay, bond prices and the time value money, so we're just going to do two examples here, how we calculate the price, and in this case, we're looking at a bond where the coupon payments are annual, okay? It's not semi-annual, so let's look at this first one. For example, suppose the coupon rate on a bond is 4%, that never changes. Payment is made once a year. If the time to maturity is five years and the market discount rate is 6%, then the price of the bond is 91.575, 
per $100 of par value. The par value is the amount of principal on the bond. Okay, so if we want to start with the algebra first down here, as we said, the price of the bond is simply the present value of the cash flows. So we can see our coupon is 4% on 100, so that's 4. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 coupon payments. Remember the last coupon is payment is paid with the par, $100. So we have our 5 coupon payments, and we're simply doing a uh, present value calculation using 6%. So that's for one year, two year, three year, four year, five year. And you add back, there's the um, present value of the first coupon, second, third, fourth, and the present value of the fifth coupon combined with the par value. And uh, using the algebra, we get 91.575. If I bring up the calculator, again, second PY, wait a minute, I had a semi-annual bond in there first. I'm gonna change that to uh, periods per year equals one. And as we, we can scroll through, this is a five-year bond. The uh, market rate is uh, 6%. The payment is four because it's annual. And our future value is 100 on the, on the par value. So we're gonna compute our present value and we get 91.5752, 91.5752, okay? Very easy. Now uh, again, so we could see in this case, that the coupon rate is 4%, but the market discount rate has gone up to 6%. So as we know, as interest rates go up, the price goes down, that's why it's selling below par. But let's look at this case, it's got a coupon rate of 8%, and uh, the market discount rate is 6%, we can see it's gonna se uh, sell at a premium. And again, I won't go through all the algebra here, but uh, down here we've got just got the algebra, old school. Uh, the price of the bond is simply the present value of the uh, all the cash flows. So again, let's just do it on the calculator though. It's uh, 5N and now it's uh, 8 um, interest rate. Oh, sorry, market discount rate has gone to 6. Uh, sorry, uh, backwards. 6 IY. And our payment though is the 8. 8 is our payment. And 100 is our future value. So we're going to compute our present value, and we've got 108.42, okay? So by now, at this stage, uh, calculating the price of a bond should be fairly easy. Uh, calculating the yield to maturity of a bond is when we know the price and we're solving for IOI, should also be fairly easy, okay? Bond prices and the time value of money. So now we're looking at the yield to maturity. If the market price of a bond is known, we can calculate its yield to maturity, sometimes called the redemption yield or yield to redemption, okay? The yield to maturity is the internal rate of return on the cash flows, the uniform interest rate such that when the future cash flows are discounted at that rate, the sum of the present values equals the price of the bond. It is the implied market discount rate. The yield to maturity is the rate of return on the bond to an investor given three critical assumptions. This is important. One, the investor holds the bond to maturity. Two, the issuer makes all of the coupon and principal payments in the full amount on the scheduled dates. Therefore, the yield to maturity is the promised yield, the yield assuming the issuer does not default on any of the payments. And finally, three, and this is a key one that we've seen, uh, the investor is able to reinvest coupon payments at that same yield. This is a characteristic of an internal rate of return. Okay, on this slide, we're calculating the yield to maturity. So for example, suppose that a four year, 5% annual coupon payment bond is priced at 105 per $100 of par value, the yield to maturity, we're solving for the IOI, okay? So I'll just bring up the calculator here and I'm just gonna hit clear. I just move it out of the way. So we're gonna check uh, second PY. Well, we need to be in one. Hit enter because we're doing an annual pay. So we can see over here, uh, it's 4N, four year, 4N, and 5% uh, coupon. So we know the payment is uh, five is the payment, 100 is the future value, okay? And the present value, they're giving us the price, so we're gonna do 105, hit the plus or minus key, remember, because one of them has to be uh, negative. So I'm doing that on the price, and we're hitting that as the price, present value, 
and then we're computing for the IOI, we get 3.634399, or a little bit of rounding here, okay? So I won't do that for the, the three other calculations here, but that's just the table from the text where they gave the coupon payment per period, they gave the number of periods to maturity, and they gave the price, and all these it's assuming that the future value is 100, based on 100, and here we calculated the IOI, the yield. So I'll let you practice that, okay? So we're just gonna finish this LOS with a couple of practice questions with regards to calculating the price and calculating the yield on a bond. So the first practice question, a bond with two years remaining until maturity offers a 3% coupon rate with interest paid annually. At a market discount rate of 4%, the price of this bond per $100 of par value is closest to A, 95.34, B, 98, or C, 98.11. Okay, so we'll read the question carefully. It's a two years remaining until maturity, 3% coupon, interest paid annually. So the first thing we need to do is check second PY that we're set to one. Okay, so that's good. We've set to annual payment periods per year. Then we're just gonna solve it on the calculator. So we're gonna do two N, two years remaining, and the market discount rate is 4%, so we're gonna hit four IY. And um, the coupon payment, 3% coupon rate, that never changes. So that's three payment, 100 on the future value, and we're gonna compute the present value, which is the price, 98.113905. So the correct answer is C. So we'll do another quick practice question here. An investor who owns a bond with a 9% coupon rate that pays interest semi-annually and matures in three years is considering its sale. If the required rate of return on the bond is 11%, the price of the bond per hundred of par value is closest to A, 95, B, 95.11, or C, 105.15. Okay, let's bring up the calculator to solve this one, and you can see, aha, it's semi-annual. So I need to go to my second PY. Wait a minute, the last question we did was annual. Need to change my parameter. So I'm gonna hit two, enter, periods per year is two, okay? And clear that up. So now I can solve the question, three years remaining. So N equals six, three years times semi-annual equals six. So I could do three, second NN is gonna give me my six, or I could just do six N, okay? Interest rate 11 IY, we don't adjust it because we set our parameter. However, the, it's semi-annual, so 9% coupon on 100, that's nine, but it's divided by two, 4.5 on the payment. 4.5 on the payment, and it's $100 uh, future value, face value, par value, and we're gonna compute the present value, 95.00, so the correct answer is A. One last practice question to finish this LOS, we're gonna calculate the annual yield to maturity. So a bond with a 20 years remaining until maturity is currently trading at 111 per $100 of par value. The bond offers a 5% coupon rate with interest paid semi-annually. The bond's annual yield to maturity is closest to A, 2.09%, B, 4.18%, or C, 4.5%. Okay, so let's bring up the calculator again. So it says that uh, it's uh, semi-annual. So when, as soon as we see semi-annual, we gotta check our parameter, second PY, yes, because the last question we did was semi-annual. In this case, we're calculating for the yield, they're giving us the price, okay? So there's 20 years remaining, so 20 times two is 40N. So I can just click in 40N, okay? And, or as I've shown before, you could do 20, second and N, it's gonna give you the 40, all right? Now it's giving us the uh, price, 111. So we're gonna do one, 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 but we're gonna hit the plus minus key uh, because one has to be negative and we're gonna make the price negative, so that's the present value, okay? It's a 5% coupon, but it's semi-annual. 5% on 100 is five, divided by two is 2.5 on the payment. So 2.5 on the payment, and of course it's $100 face value, future value, par value, and in this case we're computing the IOI, and we're getting 4.1828, so the correct answer is B. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.